It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life brings you interviews with some of the most inspirational and influential people in the world. It's our goal to educate and empower you so you can live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. We have another great show for you today. Have you ever wondered what makes successful people different? What drives them to achieve the things that most people only dream about? Today's guest, Jack Canfield, has studied and reported on successful people for years. He knows what motivates them, drives them, and inspires them. Dubbed America's number one success coach, Jack is an authority on peak performance strategies and the development of human potential. He's the originator of the Chicken Soup for the Soul series, which Time Magazine called a publishing phenomenon. Jack is a multiple New York Times bestselling author whose books include The Success Principles, How to Get from Where You Are to Where You Want to Be. He is founder and chairman of the Canfield Training Group, is a corporate trainer, keynote speaker, and popular radio and TV guest. Welcome, Jack. Thank you so much for joining us today. My pleasure, Joan. Thanks for having me. So, Jack, it's an honor for me to have you here because your work changes lives and what we're about to discuss changes lives. So, you open your book, The Success Principles, with take 100% responsibility for your life. This is something, Jack, that many people, I believe, don't do. They love to blame everyone else for their outcomes. So, is taking responsibility the number one thing that someone must do before trying to enact any change? Yeah, I think it is. It's foundational. It's, it's, it's really everything rests on this. If you're a blamer, a complainer, an excuse maker, you're basically admitting you're powerless that everything else outside of you is what's creating your life, is what's creating the quality of your experience in life, the, the wealth, the health, the relationships, etc. And so we have to reown that power and realize that we are at choice every given minute. I teach a little formula that says E plus R equals O. Events in your life plus your response equals the outcomes you get. And everything you're currently experiencing is an outcome of how you responded to an earlier event. The food that was put in front of you, the money that was given to you, the comments that were made to you, etc. And how you responded to those produced the outcome. So think of it as a formula of 2 plus 2 equals 4. If you don't like 4, if the world's doing 2, like the recession happens or you lose your job or whatever, you have to do something different than what you're currently doing. Because what you're currently doing only gets you what you're currently getting. If it would have given you more, more would have showed up already. So we've got to change our thoughts, our images, and our behaviors. The only three things we have any control over is our thoughts, our images, and our behavior in response to what occurs in the world. So we're always creating, promoting, or allowing our future by what we think, what we imagine, and what we, what we do. And so once we get that, then we're empowered to start changing our thoughts, changing our images, changing our beliefs, rather than blaming, complaining, and excuse-making. So, Jack, what have you learned from studying successful people? But successful people seem to have a passion for something. There's something they care deeply about, whether it's art, music, architecture, being a writer, being a coach, whatever it is. They're just passionate about it. They can't not do it. And so they want to experience something, they want to express something, or they want to do something. And then they're committed to it 100%, not 99%, but 100%. I'll do whatever is required so that I can be successful. So that's what gives them that drive, that commitment. And for some people, it's something they innately know when they're really young. You know, my, my son is a hip-hop artist, knew from a very early age he wanted to do music, he wanted to be a hip-hop artist, a rap star. He's got a band, he's got a group, he's got a recording studio, he does all that, and he's also a DJ. For someone else, it might come from a tragedy, like the woman who started Mothers Against Drunk Driving said, this should never, ever happen to anyone else again, and so I'm committed now to, you know, stop drunk drivers so they're not killing kids like my daughter. I have a friend whose wife died of cancer, and he's now a nutritionist saying nobody has to die of cancer if you take care of your body correctly and keep it alkaline you won't die and he's passionate about that because of the loss that he experienced as far as the fundamentals of success what I found is you have to start with a vision what is it you want to create in the world what does your life look like what is the impact you want to have 
then you have to turn that into measurable, specific goals. When I say measurable, I mean by how much by when. You can't just say I want to live in a big house in the ocean. How big is that house? Is it 5,000 square feet, 6,000 square feet? What ocean? And by when do you want it? And then you've got to break it down into steps, little baby steps, little baby goals. And then you have to believe it's possible. You have to use affirmations, which are phrases that affirm that you already have what you want. And I'm joyfully depositing my $100,000 check or looking at my $1 million you know, net worth. Then you have to have a visualization where you visualize every morning and every night before you go to bed. You visualize your results as already accomplished. We think you have to have an accountability partner in a mastermind group or a coach, someone that's going to keep you on track, is going to hold you accountable. Then you've got to take action, respond to the feedback, learn how to ask for what you want, not be afraid of rejection, and then persist until you get what you want. So those are the core things. Now, I have 67 principles in my book, but there's about 15 of them that are core, that are required. Like in football, you've got to block, tackle, pass, etc. So basically, once you master those, then you can add on the nuances of everything else. Jack, what about when you hear people say that they're afraid to fail? I mean, in my life personally, I've gotten rid of the notion of failure. I think everything's Mm -hmm. a lesson and I no longer let fear stop me. But I hear this Mm -hmm. so often from people that they're afraid. So what tips do you offer to manage that? I mean, has fear played a a role in your life at all? Well, it did at one point. I mean, I was very fearful. I was very shy. I was afraid of rejection. I was afraid of people making fun of me. I was afraid of humiliation. Mm -hmm. I was afraid of loss of the things I had, you know, and so forth. And I think ultimately people are afraid of death and, and isolation, you know, being alone. But basically, I learned that Fear is just me making up images in my head of bad things that are going to happen in the future. Mm -hmm. Because in the present, I'm fine, you know. But fear is fantasized experiences appearing real. And so I've learned that when I'm afraid, I stop and I say, okay, how am I scaring myself? What am I imagining? And then I use my imagination to imagine the positive outcome. Because basically fear and worry is just using the power of your mind to create negative images and negative outcomes. What you want to do is just replace that with a positive outcome. And also you probably know about tapping, Mm -hmm. this EFT tapping, that's such a powerful technique, so simple to use. In the last 10 years, it's really taken off. I use it with all my clients and I use it on myself. In literally five minutes or less, you can cure a phobia, you can cure any fear, any anxiety that shows up. Like in my book, The 30-Day Sobriety Solution, which is all about how to get sober in the privacy of your own home without having to go to rehab or AA. One of the big things that drives people to drink or take drugs or overeat or gamble or do a porn addiction is anxiety. And once you realize that anxiety is just a form of fear and you can tap out any anxiety, any craving related to that, any fear you have, any test-taking anxiety, fear of rejection, basically in five minutes or less, you can literally disappear it. Now, we've taken the energy out of the amygdala, which is the back part of the brain where fear lives, bring it up into the prefrontal cortex, which is where rational thought and spiritual thought and creative thought occurs. Then we're no longer uh, afraid. We only think about what can we do to get the job done. Jack, I always stress the importance of eliminating negative talk, and that's Mm self-talk and from external sources. When I started this work, I was middle-aged, and I actually had someone tell me that I was making a fool of myself, and people were laughing at me. So what do you believe happens when we allow that seed of negativity to take life? Well, it's kind of like a cancer in the mind, you know, a mold in your refrigerator that's in some jar in the back you forgot about that just grows and feeds on itself. And so, again, you can use tapping to tap on the internal negative self-talk. There are techniques for turning your inner critic into an inner coach. I write about that in two of my books. And we know from the work of Masaru Emoto, who's this Japanese psychologist and scientist, that every thought you think is affecting the water molecules in your body. And they actually change the molecular structure of the water in your body. So when we feel afraid, we feel angry, we feel irritated, etc., what happens is it's making us weaker. It actually weakens the whole nervous system and doesn't allow us to be as resourceful as we are when we're in love, when we're in joy, when we're in acceptance, forgiveness, and all of that. So basically, we have to replace internal negative self-talk with positive, affirming self-talk. And the first thing you have to do is you have to become aware of it. And then I know some people, they wear a rubber band around their wrist, and every time they think of something, they hear themselves say something negative, they Mm -hmm. will snap it, not to Mm -hmm. punish themselves, but just to awaken the awareness. And then there's something called the law of replacement. You cannot get rid of something without replacing it with something new, or the old thing will be sucked back in by what's called the law of the vacuum. The vacuum will suck the old back in. So we have to replace 
negative self-talk with positive self-talk. That's why affirmations, reading positive books, listening to shows like yours, you know, listening to CDs, um, you know, repeating positive things to yourself, talking to yourself in the mirror and giving yourself a pep talk, all of that is really important in order to develop that positivity. You know, there's an old saying, you are the company that you keep. And I think so many of us surround ourselves with people that hold us down and we're not even aware of it. So if someone wants to be more successful, what should that person look for when cultivating relationships? Well, you want to look for people that support you, encourage you, believe in you, tell you it's possible. You want to find people that are already committed to their own success, that are doing well or committed to doing well, that are setting goals and that meditate and affirm and that are uh, taking action in their life. People that are modeling who you want to become. So, you know, I talk about drop out of the end of awful club and we're the average of the five people that we spend the most time with. So if they're always blaming, complaining, negative, putting you down, putting other people down, mm -hmm. judging people, etc., then that's going to affect you in a, in, a, in a way. We're basically affected by the people around us. We can learn to build a wall of light around ourselves so that that negative energy doesn't come in. But until we do that, and it takes a little time to develop that technique, you want to be very careful who you choose to spend time with and pick people that you feel attracted to and that inspire you and uplift you. Jack, it's graduation time and we have a lot of students that will be entering the workforce and just starting out on their career. So what advice or tips do you offer to these kids that are just beginning? Well, you know, this may sound sort of serving, but I, whenever I have a college graduate, of which I have about five in my life this coming year, uh, I give them a copy of my book, The Success Principles. Mm -hmm. I tell kids, you have to study success. You've been studying biology and law and, you know, science and engineering, all these things in school. But that's not what's going to get you where you want to go. You need to know that for your job. But we know a lot of people who know a lot of information, but they're still not successful because they've never learned how to manage their emotions, how to control their states, how to motivate themselves, how to get out of fear into positivity, how to you know visualize and affirm all the things we talked about. And so you have to study this thing called success. And one of my big goals is eventually to have this stuff taught in the schools where there'll be a class called self-science or something like that, where just like biology and math and reading and so forth, you would have to study it. So basically make a study, read the books, listen to the CDs, you know, find some mentors and commit to that. Jack, thank you so much for being here and for sharing your principles for success. We've only touched upon this subject, so if you'd like to get a copy of the Success Principles, or if you want to learn more about Jack and his work, you can visit jackcanfield.com. Jack, in our final moments, what do you think is the most important thing you'd like to leave our listeners with? Well, I think the most important thing is to realize, and I've learned this in my own life, is anything is possible. If you can dream it, you can make it happen. So just be clear about what you want. Believe it's possible. Take action toward that. You don't have to know all the action steps. Just get started, and you'll start getting feedback, and you'll start attracting to you the things you need. Don't underestimate your intelligence, your power. Chicken Soup for the Soul, my biggest success. 500 million copies sold. We had 144 rejections from our publisher. Mm. Once the book came out, it took 18 months to find a publisher. And once the book came out, it took 14 months before we hit a bestseller list, but now we sold half a billion books. So the key thing is believe in yourself and never, ever, ever give up. Jack, thank you so much for being here with us. Your work, it, it has absolutely touched my life. I read your book when I was starting all of this, and it has helped me to excel at what I'm doing. And I just thank you so much for being here, for sharing this information, and for changing so many lives. No, it's my pleasure, John. Thanks for having me. We'll be right back. Hi, this is Joan Herman, host of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. Did you know that Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life has a free monthly digital magazine that can be read online or emailed to your inbox? Every month, nationally recognized leaders in their field provide information to educate, inspire, and motivate you. We believe in a holistic approach to life, incorporating mind, body, and spirit. Check out a copy of Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life 24-7. Visit CYACYL.com and be sure to tell your friends. Thank you for joining us today. We hope you found the show informative. At Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. 
Remember that the information provided are the opinions of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on the site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, and be sure to follow the show on Facebook and Twitter. Until next time, this is Joe Herman. Thanks for tuning in.